Oh, we're going through the Bears today. Um, this NFL previews are needing to get uh, done due to week one even closing out. I got to start doing game reviews and whatnot. So let me try to get where I can, especially with week one. Teams are not settled yet, so let me figure out where they're at, um, at quickly. Bears, um, it's a team that's seen the lowest lows to franchise that just hasn't won in a while. It's a the fan base that's starving for something, and um, the Bears, I think, are moving in the right direction where they can be competitive again. Um, again, there's a process. You can't just automatically think they are um, invincible or that they are uh, Super Bowl contenders yet, you know. Uh, there's a process with it, but this is a good team um, in terms of what they were able to put to get in, um, and they got some upside to them. So the Bears last year was 7-10. and 10. They were five and three at home, two and seven away, two and four in the division. Scored three hundred and sixty times, uh, gave up three hundred and seventy nine points. They were twenty seven in the passing yards with one hundred and eighty two point one, second in rushing yards with one hundred and forty one point one, eighteenth in points for with twenty one point two, and twentieth in points against with twenty two point three. So, again, they needed to upgrade both sides of the football. And I think they did a pretty good job. So let's just look at the roster and see what's going on with it. Uh, they're running a three wide receiver, one tight end set, which I'm pretty sure is every single team out here. Um, but overall, let's take a look. They start out with left tackle Braxton Jones. Young guy, has upside, is improving. Um, and again, they drafted him. So they are definitely seeing that, you know, they're trying him out, seeing how he's going to do and seeing um, where he's going to end up, if he's going to end up being super reliable or if they're going to have to find someone elsewhere. It's too young to, it's too uh, soon to call that. So on right now, honorable mention, young left tackle, that's what they need. At the left guard, they got Tevin Jenkins, who's also a really young left guard. Um, definitely a, a good guy for, for run, run protection um, and definitely an athletic big guard that they need. Um, he was also honorable mention on my list, so again, that is a good step for him. At the center position, they got Shelton, who was a longtime Ram center. I don't really know much about the guy. He's uh, definitely a veteran-type center, so he's been in the league for a little bit, just hasn't had the opportunity as a starting role. So where he goes with this, only time will tell, so that's a big question mark there. Um, at the right guard, you got Nate Davis, though, who's got upside. He's young. Um, definitely trying to prove something there. Definitely trying to get better as a guard, um, as an offensive lineman. So give him the benefit of the doubt of improving. And then at the right tackle, they also drafted him. Darnell Wright, honorable mention for him. Uh, definitely big body tackle. Definitely a size up front that they need. Um, him with Braxton Jones can go a long way to a positive uh, future for him. Um, definitely to protect the QB of the future that they just drafted this past year. So uh, having right there is nice. Um, definitely honorable mention. So, I mean, again, these are some really, really nice young pieces. At the QB, Caleb Williams, he's the future. He's the number one draft pick, and there's a lot of pressure on the guy. I do believe he's got the upside to do things. Um, I know this past week wasn't great at all, but uh, he is a rookie, so a lot of pressure comes with it. You just got to give the guy time. I do believe that Caleb Williams can be productive. And uh, I really do hope that he is a future. I hope this is kind of a, a testament to knowing that Chicago is not going to suffer with not knowing who's going to throw the ball. Um, at the fullback, he got blazing game. He's honestly one of the best fullbacks out of the few that are in the NFL now. Uh, blazing game has done wonders in, uh, in terms of being a part of the offense, also just being a good blocker. Uh, running back, DeAndre Swift, he was honorable mention on my list. He's a pretty elite, elusive, fast back. Um, definitely uh, not afraid to not afraid to get tackles, not afraid to go up the middle. Uh, definitely more of a bounce to the outside kind of guy, though. So overall, though, DeAndre Swift is a nice thing that they – a nice pickup that they signed, a nice player they signed. Um, when you look at the receivers, you got DJ Moore, who's an honorable mention. Definitely a guy that was borderline top 10. Um, definitely a guy that's productive. And he produced in Carolina with a really terrible team. He came to Chicago. Having Caleb Williams there, I think he will definitely have a really good season this year. Um, and I could see a top 10 in the future for him. Keenan Allen, honestly, missed the top 10 um, a little bit. 
Um, second guessing myself on it, but I mean, he should be top 10 potential. Keenan Allen is just one of those guys, great route runner. It seems like, it seems like he's moving at such a slow rate though, but at the same time, he just gets in the right spots at the right time. And it's hard to, it's hard to guard, man. So Keenan Allen there, fantastic sign. Um, as well as the great draft pick they got from UW Odunes. That's going to be a great compliment to Caleb. Also having him with Moore and Allen is insane. And then at the tight end, Cole Komet, number seven on the tight end list. He's also a guy that can't explode. He definitely can't take over games. So this offense is looking dangerous. Um, at the defensive side of the football, they are running a 4-3 base. You're looking at DN Montez Sweat at the number six in the DN list. I think he's phenomenal. He led in sacks in two teams last year, and he played half and half on both. So that's crazy. Um, great pass rusher, just overall very skillful, great leader for them especially them having a D-line that's kind of iffy. Um, but the D-tackle, Billings, he's a veteran. He's been there before, done that. So I just think he brings a good amount of presence to him, as well as, you know, you need run stuffers, uh, run stuffers and he, I think he's going to be that, um, especially with mentoring Dexter, who has young upside potential. I think he can do really well for him. Having Billings, though, I think is going to help his growth. At the D-N position, can he be good? We'll see. He's... Already kind of at the time of, you know, he should have been good by now. He's 29. So I think definitely he can be productive. It's just time will tell with it. Um, I think Sweat will definitely draw up enough attention to where he can do a couple things this year. And, you know, he should be productive to the defense. Um, at the linebacker positions, TJ Edwards, he's an honorable mention on the list for outside linebackers. He was productive in Philly. He's been productive in Chicago. Built a good culture along with Tremaine Edmonds at the middle linebacker position. He's an honorable mention. He's had a great year. Definitely a little bit down from Buffalo, but he's still productive. He's still a guy you want. He's still a good leader. I'm excited to see what he does. And on the other side, you got Sanborn, young upside guy. Definitely could see a lot of good things from him, especially with Edwards and Edmonds there with him. When you look at the secondary, um, you're going to have Jalen Johnson, who is an honorable mention. Definitely a top 10 potential, um, definitely shut down corner, ball hawk, whatever you name it. I mean, honestly, uh, very entertaining to watch. A guy that is going to play angry because of the disrespect he got from even the top 100 list. So I do want to see what he's up to and how he, what he brings to the table. I think he brings a lot of leadership, a lot of skills. It's going to be fun for him. Um, you look at the other corner, you got Stevenson, who's young, has upside. I'm also excited to see what he does. I think he's going to do wonders for the team. Um, at the nickelback, Kyler Gordon, another young guy that's got potential. It's a really young secondary group that just has a lot of potential and a lot to look forward to. Um, at the safeties, you got Kevin Byard, who they got. It's like a prove it kind of type situation. Can he get back to relevancy? He was one of the top free safeties in the league. Can he get back to that? I would like to see that for sure. He was entertaining to watch. Strong safety, Jaquan Brisker, hard hitting safety. Definitely loves destroying receivers. Uh, honorable mention on the list. Definitely a good, good ball player. I think the secondary is really going to be fun. Um, kicker is going to be Cairo Santos. Honorable mention. Definitely consistent. Definitely a great kicker. Definitely who you want. Punter. It's a draft pick. Taylor. So we'll see how he does. And then kicker turner. Fellas Jones Jr. He's a question mark. I know he fumbled um, the game this year, uh, this uh, today. Uh, he fumbled once on the kickoff return or something. So, overall, I do believe that this team has the potential of being uh, extremely good and extremely talented. Um, and it kind of just, it's a process. It's just, they just got to trust the process. They're going the right direction. That's all that counts right now. So, they should be looking at it from that perspective. So looking at the record for the Bears, um, the green arrows are uh, wins. So, Let's take a look at the Bears schedule, right? So it's um, start off in week one with the Titans. I did say they would win. They did win the game today. Um, then they're going to travel to Sunday Night Football. They're going to play at Houston. I got them losing at Houston there just because of inexperience. CJ Stroud is looking like a 10-year bet, like the way he plays. So it's insane. But um, right now I'm going to say inexperience and just Houston's just a better team. Um, they will go to L.A., or they will go to Indianapolis. They will beat the Colts, and then they'll 
Go home, play the Rams, and then the Rams will beat them there. Go play the Panthers. They'll beat the Panthers, and then they'll play the Jaguars. I think they'll lose the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence experience as well as just their team. Um, they'll get a bye. Then they'll play the Commanders in Washington. I think they'll beat them. They're just a better team. They'll go to Arizona. I think the Cardinals will get them. Um, and then they'll play uh, three straight home games. I think they'll beat New England because they're just a better squad. They will lose to Green Bay. Um, and then they will beat Minnesota. After that, three straight road wins, or three straight road games. Um, they'll lose to Detroit. Detroit's just better. They'll definitely lose to the Niners. And they will split it. They'll lose to the, the Vikings in Minnesota there. They will beat the Lions, though, at home. They'll split it with them. They will lose to the Seahawks. And then for the final week, they will beat Green Bay at Green Bay, uh, making a statement for them to close out the year, to know that, hey, we are progressively getting better. We are going to be here. And they are getting progressively better with time, even if it's by one win, because the record is going to be 8-9. It may seem like... I'm being too harsh on this team. It may seem like they should get more wins. Um, but, again, this is a this is a tricky schedule to kind of go by because you do have, you know, your share of they can maybe beat the Cardinals, sure. But, I mean, there are going to be some games where they're just going to slip up due to just inexperience and getting the, to the chemistry, you know. So, overall, though, 8-9 is not bad. While that might not be playoffs, they are getting there. And that's all Bears fans should hope for is the fact that they are getting better with time. And their potential is definitely, like, going towards that. They just need to get a couple more pieces. I think this team can be extremely hard to beat.